reading. I want to make a video about reading. So when I was uh, a little bit about my background and my history, which and how it ties into my reading. So when I was about eight or nine, I started reading religiously. Like I started to really get into reading. Um, I don't know when I started reading as a kid, probably the same as everyone else. But um, I started to get really into reading at about eight or nine and started to really commit to getting through books and really enjoying it. Um, and I had a very advanced reading age because I was reading so much. Like I, I read Jane Eyre when I was, I think I was 11, maybe 10. 10 or 11 anyway I was very young right so I had an advanced reading age and just an appetite I don't know how much I understood of what I was reading but I was reading everything I could possibly read um, so I was really into reading in primary school and then I went to secondary school and which in England uh, for, for American viewers in England, you go to primary school until you're 11, and then you take uh, an exam called the 11 plus. I think all of this has changed, but back in my day, you took the 11 plus, and that kind of gave you a grade that you could then try and get into different schools. So I took the 11 plus, and then I went to secondary school at a very posh school called Alain's in um, East London. I hated it, not in East London, in um, Dulwich. So it was kind of like Dulwich College. It was like a sister school to Dulwich College. I don't know if they were actually kind of related in any way, but anyway, point is post school, right? And um, so I went there from 11 on and I started getting bullied immediately. My mum was just getting famous around about then. And so it got out somehow who my mum was and that just became the thing, right? Everyone wanted to beat me up and bully me. And I'd been gregarious, had a lot of friends at primary school, I think. I was a normal kid, right? Um, and then after I started getting bullies, I bullied, I just kind of disappeared into myself. And it stimulated my reading even more to the point where it was all I did. Like, I didn't go out anywhere. I didn't hang with any people. I didn't have any friends. Uh, all I did was read, just constantly. I remember at breaks at school... I would, I got a job eventually, but before I got the job at school, the task at school, I would go find a place on the school grounds, hide behind some bushes and just read and just hide and just like be a voyeur on school life. And the same at lunch and the same at break and the same with lessons. I started to skip, start to skip lessons, particularly when my bully, whose name was David Georgiou, I wonder what he's doing now, but when he was in a class, I would just skip the class. Not all of them, but, you know, it happened quite often. Um, I think he was, I think he was getting beaten by his dad. I don't know if that logic is something I applied during the time or someone told me that. Where did I get that from? Did I just make, how, who would tell me that? I don't know. Anyway, he must have had a story, this kid. But he was my tormentor. And um, if he was in a class then I would often skip that class and just go find somewhere to sit and read, right? And that started my trend of skipping class to the point where I eventually I left school at 14, basically. Uh, not officially, but I just kind of stopped going. I stopped going to Alain's when I was 14, uh, a little before 14, actually. And then my mum moved me to an East End school uh, called John Cass that was the worst school. I think I've mentioned that before. The worst school in London at the time. One of the best schools in London, maybe in England, to one of the worst schools in London, maybe England. And I just never went to, to John Cass. I mean, I think I literally went to three classes and that was it. Um, so I was out of school. But the point was, all of the, through this time I was reading. You know, and I eventually I started to make friends and I read a little bit less. But it was always a, a very important part of what I was doing. I was a voracious reader. Always wanted to read stuff. And then I came to America and it all changed. I just, I just hit a wall with my reading. I think I got into the internet. Like I was 27, so what is this? This is like 24 years ago, 26, 27. So yeah, 24, 25 years ago. And the internet was really starting to hit. And uh, it was AOL, it was dial up, but it was fascinating. You could find tons of stuff online. And I think that and a secondary love for gaming kind of picked up and I just kind of just drifted away from reading. And actually I didn't just kind of drift away. I stopped. I just literally stopped reading books completely. And I think... At the time, I remember thinking, I think I'm done with reading. I don't think I'll ever do that again. <laughs> I'll just do other things. Well, now I'm back, right? So part of my creative journey, part of the problem with my creative journey is the fact that I just feel like my mind is not able to focus. I'm having trouble focusing in this video, right? 
So my mind is unable to focus for long periods of time. And I think it's the nature of the phone that I don't use that much, but it's still, you know, it's a part of our lives. Um, the phone and just jumping in and out of television and watching anything whenever you want it. So your attention span, your, your, your attention span is so small. Your requirement for dopamine hips is constant. I need to constantly be given a reward. And I think that that is really affecting my ability to be a creative force, right? And one of the things that I was a very promising student, even though I hated school, secondary school, until there just came a point when I got bullied and that was it, just gone. Now I wasn't interested in school. I didn't want to be there. I wasn't going to learn whatever. So my education became reading, right? So now that I'm, so, so when I came to America and I stopped reading, my education kind of stopped, not entirely, but it slowed down. And therefore I'm just not as much of a creative force, right? And I'm really, I didn't feel it at the time, but now it's really starting to wreak havoc a little bit. You know, I want to be a writer. I say I'm a writer and I have written a lot of stuff, but in order to dedicate myself to writing, surely I've got to be reading fucking books, <laughs> right? So anyway, the long and the short of it is rather than just coming home and just turning on the television and thinking about food and um, just lazing around and just kind of staring into the space of my future life, which is what I feel I do sometimes. I just a thousand yard stare at the end of my life. And how is it closer? Is it closer? It's fucking terrible, right? Um, I want to have, uh, I want to commit to more reading. So I went out and I bought myself a Kindle. And I never wanted a Kindle because I love the smell of books and I love the look of books. And I love the feel and the progress of a book. Like I like opening a book and then feeling you know, six hours later, I'm like, oh, I'm halfway through this book. Like, I feel that sense of achievement, that sense of progress. It's like, it's a good feeling, right? And I didn't think I'd get that with the Kindle. But I plumped for one because just buying books is just, I don't have anywhere to put them and also just move with the times, man. So I got myself a Kindle and I love it. <laughs> I am suddenly back in. I bought this thing. This thing arrived four days ago. And in four days, I've read three books. I'm just... I'm back in 100%. And it's fascinating. It's it's returning me. I, I, I feel like it is. I hope this is true and not false information that I'm just convincing myself. It feels like I'm returning to a state of mind that I was in many, many years ago. And that's a positive thing, right? Where I'm a little bit more focused and more creative and more belief and more confidence. You know, it does that for you, I feel, writing. This is probably going to sound pompous. But I feel that when you read something, particularly if it's a good book and it's well and it's intellectually written, if you read a good book, just understanding it and making that commitment makes you feel confident and smart, right? And it doesn't have to be a brilliant book. I'm not, I'm not reading Bertram Russell here. But when you're reading a, a, a reasonably smart reader or, a, or a, just a well-written book, a well-written book, you just feel confidence. You feel strength. It feels cultured, you know? Um, and it feels like you're exercising a little bit of discipline, a little bit of control. You're putting everything aside for this moment, which is just you and the book. And it's a really good feeling. And I, I just can't believe how quickly it's come back. And now I can't put the fucking thing down. Like last night, we just sat in the living room with a fire going, candles burning, <laughs> jazz music on the television, just in the background. And Laura on her computer doing some... Um, some artwork, some creative work, and me just reading a book for five hours. Like, I don't know, it felt really good, and I'm really looking forward to doing it tonight. So I want to talk a little bit about the Kindle, because if you're it's coming up to Christmas, and you know, this is our Christmas stocking stuff as special. Um, if you know someone who is, loves reading and they've said they don't want a Kindle, they're probably wrong, because <laughs> I was. I didn't want one of these things, but I love it. I absolutely love it. So this was like 130 bucks. Now you can get it. It might cost 150 bucks or 160 bucks, but that is if you pay to not have the ads. Now, if you're anything like me, you didn't understand what that meant. And my gut instinct was get one without the ads, but I also broke. So I'm like, no, I got to just deal with the ads, whatever. The ads are fine. So I'll show you the ads, right? This Kindle is currently off. That's the ad. And that's all it does, right? So now to turn it on, there's a little button at the bottom. And when you press the little button at the bottom, it shows you the ad, but then it says swipe to unlock. So you swipe to unlock, you just swipe up, and there's your book. Now you don't see any other ads. I think if I tap the top, 
and I go to my home page, which shows some of the books, there's like an ad at the bottom. You see that ad at the bottom there, right? So there's that. You can see what I'm reading there. Look at that. Wasp Factory. Tea Time of the Soul. The Hobbit I'm reading again. The Man in the High Castle, 1984. The Time Machine. Oh, my God, it's so exciting. But that's the ad. That's the extent of the ad. So, And it doesn't get in your way. It just doesn't. So, And I'm very averse to ads. I hate ads. I don't have cable TV exclusively because I will not watch ads. It's the only reason. So um, the ads don't get in the way. The other things is the book progress. So if they're like me and I thought I didn't like a Kindle, I wouldn't like one. The progress is covered by literally just has a percentage and a page number at the bottom. And that feels good. You know, it's not a race. It's not a competition. I'm not suggesting that. But it does feel good to work through a book. There is a sense of achievement. You feel like you're doing something valuable with your time and you're achieving something. You're educating and you're learning. So it feels good to look down and go, like, oh, I've read 40% of this book. I like it personally. It feels like progress. It's just like dog earring. You know, I, I used to love dog ears on books as much as it ruins the book. I used to love it because it was a sign of use. It was a sign of progress. Well, I kind of get the same feeling from this. Um, the other thing is looking at a screen. So I hate my phone. I only use it when I have to, but I love my computer, which means that I look at a computer screen all day. I mean, it's so unhealthy. I'm trying to cut down on my time. So therefore, I didn't want to look at a Kindle, right? But it doesn't feel like a screen. Um, I've got like the, um, I've got the brightness set really low on it. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but that, when, it's, when I'm looking at this, that looks like a piece of paper. Not quite, but it doesn't feel like a screen. There's no eye strain, right? And it's you can make it bigger and smaller. It's just perfect. <laughs> it's really good. So don't get the, the really expensive one. I think there's like Kindle Fire or HD that has a color screen and does all these other things. I would suggest not doing any of that. Even though it might seem a better deal to get that rather than this, I would still get the cheapest one, which is expensive. But I would still get the cheapest one because... I think it's beautiful. And then the last thing is the library. I always like the idea of collecting a library, right? That there's a bit of show off in me, and I think everyone understands this if they're going to be honest. You like the idea of someone coming to your house and seeing all your books and going, oh, look what this person reads. Aren't they smart? It's, I know that's superficial, but I'm also being honest. I think we're all like that a little bit. And I used to love the idea of a library. Well, I'm past that now. I don't give a fuck if anyone knows what I read, right? And it's really good to know that I basically, when I got this, I went, it was a little complex to figure it out, but I wiped everything off it, like the user guide, the preloaded stuff. So everything's gone off of this. And the only things that are on this now are books that I have read. So this has become my library and it's a stamp in time. You know, I can look and say, okay, on December, where are we now? On December 4th, 2020, I started reading again. So a habit which I hadn't done for 24 years. I started reading again, and this is tracking everything I've read in that time. And I like that. I love that connection, right? I'm Hopefully, I'll keep good care of this. I also think that the battery life is amazing. I'm gushing about this thing, aren't I? But, like, I charged this. It was 100%. I've read it nonstop for four days, and it's at 72%. So this thing is going to last a long time. That is a lot of reading and a lot of downloading and a lot of futzing with it and, you know. Um, they say like weeks it will last weeks the battery and I can believe that it's really good so uh, that was it just getting back into the reading so this video is about encouraging you to get back into it or encouraging you to start and if you're struggling for a gift for someone get them a Kindle I think it's a really good gift I know I'm way behind the curve on this but if they're like I don't think I want a Kindle I don't think I like it it's pretty damn fucking good <laughs> you know it's a good piece of kit all right little nuggets get reading